So Hopper's gonna throw that earthquake at the big boy, big thick boy. The big boy is here, the big wall. Switch into the big boy Snorlax. Snorlax really don't care right now. And I bring in the big boy again. Big boy Snorlax is going to town here. We're gonna lick this thing down, lick it down. This whole video has been about big boy Snorlax. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we do upload PvP content every single day. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you're into that type of content. And if you're a returning subscriber, like Rusty Shackleford 420, thank you for your support. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a very classic GBL team. One of the first teams I ever used in the Ultra League. And first matchup against Ahi Jackson. And this team basically features Articuno in the lead, Snorlax and Swampert in the back, facing an Armored Mewtwo here in the first matchup. And this is a pretty good match. It, I mean, it goes both ways. It could be good for Articuno, especially if they're not running like Rock Slide. Most of them are running Dynamic Punch, but uh, it will require us to use more shields than the Mewtwo in order to win. So as you can see here, we do get off the Icy win first. That's very important because that's going to allow us to face a reduced damage side strike there. Now I do shield the first one because that one's going to do the most damage. Uh, preferably we will get to the second Icy Wind before they get to another charge move, at which point we will not have to shield. Now if it is a rock slide it's still going to hurt a lot, but very unlikely to be. And Confusion, very heavy hitting damage move for a quick attack. So as you can see side strike comes through here and does a lot less damage that time. So I'm going to go actually for the Ancient Power here, trying to see if I get the boost. So, I don't think that's a bad idea there. Ancient Power and Ice Wind will both KO. He actually ends up burning his shield, which at this point leaves me with a decision to make. Obviously, I didn't. I made it very quickly because I chose the shield right away. I want to win switch advantage, and I realized that I could farm down here. So, using that shield isn't that big of an issue because we will be able to get off an Icy Wind now. So, Whatever comes in, I'm going to throw an Icy Wind. Happens to be a Clefable. That's that's pretty good for us because we're going to reduce that charm damage, which is critical, and bring in Swampert here. And Swampert has a very good matchup against Clefable, even down to Shield, because it's so quick. He actually switches into Giratina, and I was going to switch out, but then I said, you know what, let me get off this Earthquake first because he does have a Shield still. Let's see if he wants to burn it. So... He does. We actually switch into Snorlax right away because I knew he was going to get that Dragon Cloth. I did not want my Swampert to take any damage there. So we switch into the big boy Snorlax coming in here with the Lick. And remember, this is a Shadow Claw variant. So that was part of the reason why I decided to stay in with the Swampert there for a bit longer. Because um, Snorlax is absolutely going to wall this thing. Uh, if it had Dragon Breath, it would be a different story. It'd be a lot closer. Earthquake damage would, of course, have helped us. But because it's Shadow Claw, this thing could literally do nothing to us. And what I've decided to do here is pretty much commit to a straight, and I mean straight farm down. Because one, I want the Snorlax low enough to the point where the Clefable can't farm enough energy to get to a charge attack. Two, I want to have two body slams at least ready on this Snorlax. So look at this, we have low health, perfect, can't get charmed down much. Two body slams, gonna at least demand one shield here, I would imagine, unless he wants to take two body slams. But these body slams are going to hurt. It does use the shield. I got off this second body slam here. And what I'm going to do now is switch into the Swampert. And try to get that Hydro Cannon right away. So we switch into the Swampert here. We have too much health here. And we're going to beat it to the Charge Room. Hydro Cannon is going to come through. And we are going to end up taking this first match. Good game training. So, 1-0 in this set of 5. First saw this team on Pogo King's channel a long time ago when he was testing out Articuno. Adam JP Woomhm is up next. And yeah, so he made a video on Articuno. Really great video. Everybody started using Articuno after that. And Articuno's lead is so awesome. Here against Swampert. Amazing matchup for Articuno, of course. So the Hydro Can actually is going to come out first here. And obviously, you want to always shield the first move. In this case, I chose to actually let it go through because I kind of have a feeling he's going to switch out of this matchup anyways. So I didn't really want to shield there, but if he actually chooses to stay in the match, it would have made a lot more sense to shield that first Hydro Cannon because that one's going to hurt the most. But as you see, he did switch out. So brings in Snorlax and I'm going to come in here with Swampert. Um, you could come in with Snorlax, could stay in with Swampert. Obviously, if he's running Superpower, then 
the Snorlax mirror would be a problem. So I chose to just come in with Swamper here. But the main issue with this switch is that if he has, for example, Registeel in the back, uh, we're gonna be in a pretty difficult spot after because we lost our only hard counter to it. And Articuno is gonna get absolutely destroyed by Registeel. And Snorlax, although it could take a Focus Blast, is going to have a pretty difficult time. Depends on energy. We could beat it with Earthquake, of course, but we'd have to get at least two. And I guess it would also depend on getting that Icy Wind off against the Registeel with the Articuno. There's a lot of different scenarios that have to take place. But either way here, uh, against the Snorlax, we're just going straight for the Hydro Cannons, of course. Hydro Cannon is such a great move. And the Snorlax actually chooses to shield there, which makes a lot of sense. But we are going to get to a second Hydro Cannon. And let's see if the Snorlax chooses to burn its second shield. It does not. And it does survive that. So here... I'm actually looking to get to, it looked like we CMP tie there, but for some reason I lost CMP tie. I don't think that's correct. Pretty sure Swampert should win CMP there. But as a result, we end up letting that Body Slam go through. And I figured I could farm down with Articuno anyway, so a really good spot. The Swampert comes in, again, CMP tie. Brutal. So I choose to shield this time because he's his debuff has been reset. So I burn the shield, get off this Icy Wind. Obviously, we will survive another Hydro Cannon. The thing about Swampert is it cannot farm us out with Mud Shot. So it has to throw Hydro Cannons. And it's going to have to get to at least two in order to knock us out. So I think that was definitely the correct play using that shield there. We are going to get to one more Icy Wind. Hydro Cannon comes through. See, if he had a Registeel in this spot, it would be very difficult for us. He actually switched into Giratina. And that's going to allow us to debuff this Giratina. And bring in the Snorlax. And once again, the big boy is here. The big wall, Snorlax, and look, this one has uh, Dragon Breath, so amazing that we got the Icy Wind off. That was critical, because now even though it's running Dragon Breath, this is a very good matchup for Snorlax, because all of the moves from the Giratina are already debuffed, and we can just go straight for Earthquake here. Don't want to mess around, I want to get rid of this Giratina as soon as possible, because I do not want that Dragon Claw damage. Swapper comes back in, and... Let's see, Swapper's gonna throw that Earthquake at the big boy, big thick boy. Thick comes taking that Hydro Cannon, he does not care. Snorlax does not care. Gonna body slam this Swampert and we are going to go 2-0 in this set. And Articuno lead looking great so far, obviously. Some very positive matches there in the lead position, of course, affects the game. So M Samso 0214. Always a lot easier to win matches when you win the lead. Here, Gyarados versus Articuno. This is a, a, a much closer matchup, uh, but we are running Ancient Power. And most people are never going to expect the Ancient Power to come through first. So let's go for the Ancient Power once more. Can we get the boost and absolutely run over this team? No, we cannot. We never get the boost. So the shield is going to come up here, I believe. Yes, it is, because I do not want to take that crunch damage. And he actually switches out into Swampert. Amazing for us because we are going to debuff this thing. Go for this Icy Wind. And now that this Swampert has been debuffed, we are going to switch out of here. But this time I bring in the Swampert here. Swampert against Swampert. And my, my thinking in the moment there was that, okay, their Swampert's debuffed. Mine is not. So I'll be able to like punish it. But honestly, that was a pretty dumb idea because their Swampert has a lot of energy and these hydro cannons still hurt and once again like we saw in the last match if they had registeel in the back i'm screwing myself a little here so i should have definitely come in with the snorlax here snorlax could have done just as well because of that debuff instead yes we are going to beat this swamper here in the mirror of course because it was debuffed but at what cost did it come we're down a shield the gyarados can come back in pretty much farm us down we didn't we weren't able to get off that hydro cannon and now we're in a super tough spot because what are we, what are we going to do here? I have to burn another shield if I want to keep the Articuno alive, right? But now he's up two shields and if he has like say a Registeel, we're done. So I go for a very aggressive farm down here and it actually works in our favor. So things are looking great for us unless it's a Registeel and look at that. It's a Registeel. And put this into perspective now. Imagine me getting off two Icy Winds on this Registeel. And having my Swampert in the back, even if we were down two shields, we're going to win this match. But because I made the incorrect decision of bringing in the Snorlax there instead, or sorry, of bringing in the Swampert there instead of the Snorlax against their own Swampert, it's going to end up costing us this match. We did correctly 
catch this flash cannon, but at this point it's a little too late. Obviously, um, I mean it's a great switch, but they have two shields, so there's nothing we can really do here. And body side, obviously they're gonna shield here because they don't want to take an earthquake. Focus blast going to come through. Uh, big thickums over here is obviously going to tank this very well because it's been debuffed twice and yeah if we could just land an earthquake clean without the shield we could have actually come back to win this game but you know uh you make mistakes all you could do for them is take note of them learn from them don't make them again and uh, you will continue to improve as a battler so obviously we're in flash cannon range shockingly with the two debuffs so he does get that off we're gonna go for the icu in here um this is the third debuff, but I mean it's pretty much already debuffed to its lowest point already, so... And look, look how close that match actually ended up being still, even though we had lost to Swampert and we were in a very uh, negative matchup there, it still came very close, so it just goes to show that had we made the correct decision with Snorlax early, we would have ended up winning that game. So, next matchup here against Shata Sins, I believe was the name, and he is going to lead Swampert into Articuno, obviously another very favorable, favorable lead for us and uh, I definitely cannot complain about leads in this set we pretty much won more or less every single lead in this set so it makes sense why we're winning so many games but um, yeah it's not always gonna go like that and when it does go in your favor like that you you just pray that you could take advantage so this time I did shield the hydro cannon as you saw and of course they switch out into Snorlax which is fine because we have an icy wind ready we go for the Iceman, and again, this is another situation where it's similar to the last game. Do I bring in Snorlax or do I bring in Swampert? If they have Registeel in the back, what happens? So, I bring in Swampert against Snorlax because that's that's a bit better of a matchup. It's different than him bringing in the Swampert. When he brought in the Swampert, I should have definitely have brought in the Snorlax last game. But when he brings in his own Snorlax, you just have to go Swampert for the most part because if he has superpower on, that, on his own Snorlax, which most people don't, but if he does... He's pretty much going to regain switch advantage, so better to just be safe, go with the Swampert here, Hydro Cannon this thing away, and we are tied in shields, we have switch advantage, brings in Polyrath, which is not good at all, so Polyrath is actually going to have a pretty favorable matchup against the Swampert and the Articuno to an extent, so I'm just trying to get off as much damage as I can, going to let this go through, hoping it's a nice punch. It is a nice punch, so we're definitely going to survive that. Really good for us. And I'm just going to go for Hydro Cannon here. If we are lucky, we're actually going to get to a second Hydro Cannon. But I'm expecting him to throw another Ice Punch, so it would make sense to try and sack the Articuno here, but he got to that way too quickly. So I'm just going to let this go through. It's definitely a nice punch. And this is not good because Snorlax very weak to the Polyrath, so I have to bring in the Articuno. And that is a tough decision here. Hopefully it's just another Ice Punch bait, but I didn't want to risk it, so I did shield. It is a dynamic punch, so good shield there. Gonna go for the Icy Wind here. And because shields are down, this isn't the worst situation. We just have to make sure we get rid of that Polyrath. Because we don't want Snorlax going up against that, obviously. He switches out into Swampert. This is a great matchup for us still. Uh, Articuno is going to do very well against Swampert. Even though Swampert's so spammy, but we are going to debuff it. And this is my favorite part about using Articuno. Just all of these debuffs, they're just so fun to do. A lot of stalling. You know me, I love stalling the clock. I love these long drawn out matches that just tilt opponents. That's that's what I love to do in GBL. So I actually am switching out into the Snorlax here because, you know, the big boy has full health. He could tank anything. Hydro Cannon comes through. That does nothing. Debuff Swampert. We're going to lick this thing down. Lick it down. Great, so it's gone. Polyrath comes in, and Polyrath is gonna throw this dynamic punch. Big Thickums does not care about Polyrath's dynamic punch. Look at him tank that thing like a boss. Body slam. Snorlax just beat Polyrath, who thought he could come in here and dynamic punch my Snorlax. Get that shit out of here, man. Holy. So, I'm just kidding, man. That was a good game. El Caballero Verde is up next. And. Articuno into the Giratina Guys, I mean we won every lead like There isn't really much to learn from in this video aside from 
How to win how to win the lead in Pokemon Go. That's that's that should be the title of this video. How to win the lead in Pokemon Go. So here, um, I knew that was gonna be an ominous win because it was way too soon. That's why I didn't shield. Because obviously if he built enough energy for a shadow wall, it'd be a lot more risky and I would have probably shielded, but he clicked it after like four or five uh, shadow claws, which is definitely not enough for a shadow ball. So we debuff this Cresselia and I bring in the big boy again. This whole video has been about big boy Snorlax to be honest. This guy's been putting work. Look at him, look at him tank the moon blast. Snorlax just tanked the moon blast like it was nothing. And we're just gonna spam these body slams. This lick damage is really adding up on the Cresselia. The Cresselia's already in the yellow. Big boy Snorlax is going to town here. I'm not gonna burn any shields here. I'm gonna let this Cresselia throw whatever it wants. This Cresselia could debuff me. It could literally just do whatever it wants to Snorlax because Snorlax don't care. Snorlax really don't care right now. So another body slam coming through here. This is definitely going to knock out the Cresselia. Wow, they choose to burn a shield and they switch out into Swampert. So I'm gonna get off this body slam here. And this is pretty interesting. So Swampert comes out. I'm going to bring back in. Oh wow, I switched into Swampert there actually. Was not expecting that. But I think part of my reasoning there was because we're actually up two shields. So I'm going to bring the Swampert. Actually, no, it does make sense because he has the Giratina Origin in the back. So I want to save the Articuno for that. So yes, uh, Swampert has a very poor matchup against Giratina. Definitely do not want Swampert against Giratina. So that's why I brought in the Swampert here. Totally forgot that, but at the time, I was doing this, I was clearly more in tune to what was happening, and that's definitely the correct move there. So Hydro Cannon comes through. I choose to burn this shield because I wanted to get rid of the Swampert and see if they want to get rid of their last shield as well. If not, get rid of the Swampert, whatever. So Swampert's gone. Expect the Giratina Origins come back in. It does. And I'm just going to throw whatever I can at it because I know Articun in the back is going to have a really good time. We still have some health on the Snorlax, which is going to wall the Giratina, unless it's running Dragon Pulse. But uh, either way, Snorlax comes in. Opponent switches out. Totally fine with that because I was going to throw this body slime either at the Giratina, but I'd rather throw it at this uh, Cresselia and get rid of it. And Giratina is going to come back in. And there's pretty much nothing you could do because Articuno is in the back as well. So we end up taking that game. Go 4 1 in this set. Uh, very OG team. Very good team. Is it the best team? Definitely not. Is it a good team? Yes, definitely. You could win with it. And I do recommend using that team if you're looking for something that's fun to use. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.